This lesson is a continuation of lessons in data security controls. In part one, I cover various frameworks organizations can use to develop security programs. In this lesson, I describe administrative, technical, physical, and compensating controls. I'm going to focus on the data center in this lesson. However, the control types we explore here also apply to user devices and ensuring safe use of cloud services. Technical controls are used to control and monitor traffic. They're also used to control access. They include firewalls, logical access controls, IPS, and network segmentation design, as well as traffic control configurations for the network segments. Physical controls surround all information assets. The purpose of physical security controls is to delay intruders until they're detected and intercepted. They also serve to deter weakly motivated intruders. Administrative controls drive all other controls. Policies describe management's expectations for security outcomes. Standards, guidelines, and procedures are written documents that describe how the security outcomes should be achieved. Admin controls also include ensuring data confidentiality, integrity, and availability via separation of duties, need to know, mandatory vacations, and other methods to ensure appropriate user behavior. Best practice controls described in frameworks or regulations are not always reasonable and appropriate for an organization. A big reason for this are high costs associated with staffing or adverse impacts on business operation. When the cost is too high, an organization can use compensating controls. Compensating controls replace best practice or regulatory standards with controls that achieve the same control objectives, but do so at a reasonable cost. Let's look at an example. This is an example of an accounts payable function. Gavin and Ethan are AP clerks that perform tasks associated with the function. This graphic shows separation of duties, which prevents any one person from performing all required tasks needed to complete a business function, in this case, making payments to vendors. Gavin could create and update vendor records and enter and modify invoices from those vendors. However, he cannot approve and send payments. Ethan approves invoice payment, prints checks, and reviews the check register to identify errors. He cannot enter vendors or invoices. This is usually not just a policy. It's enforced by application authorization restrictions assigned to specific roles. For example, the role assigned to Gavin is different from the role assigned to Ethan. The problem arises when this function is performed in an organization with only a single AP clerk. The organization would have to hire an additional clerk to implement separation of duties. This is a cost too high for just implementing a security control. In this example, a small business has only a single AP clerk that also performs all other financial transactions for the organization. Gavin reports directly to Grayson, who's the business owner. Note that there is no separation of duties because the clerk performs all tasks required to complete the business transaction. A compensating control is implemented that enables the business owner to use an audit report to review AP activity. The report shows products and services provided, the vendor, the invoice amount, the check number, and any other information needed to detect anomalous behavior by Gavin. Each device in an organization should initially be configured with an established security baseline. A security baseline is the minimum security controls required for a device operating within specific trust environments. Baselines are easily installed if images are used for initial configuration. Baselines are adjusted based on ongoing risk assessments. Change management procedures may change baselines over time, which must be then added to device images or documented setup baselines. 
Well, that's it for this lesson. If you have questions, please ask. And until next time, be careful what you click.